Hello. <clears throat> In this session, we'll be covering two topics pertaining to principles and practice of banking. First, I'll be talking to you about the consolidation of RRBs. And thereafter, I'll be talking to you about cash management services by banks. Well, RRBs, as all of you are aware, were established way back in 1976. After the isolation of banks in 1969, extending banking services to the nook and corner of the country was a typical problem because of the reach of the banking system to more than six lakhs villages in the country was a big challenge before the government of India and the regulators. In order to ensure that the banking system reaches the rural folks. The government thought that we should introduce the regional banks called as regional rural banks. And with this end in view, uh, an act was passed in 1976. Basically, the regional rural banks were required to cater to the regional area, specific area, and basically to the rural India. Now, this RRBs were established jointly with the government of India, sponsor banks, and state government. The capital was contributed in the ratio of 50, 35, 15, respectively, that is by government of India, sponsor banks, and state governments. Region specific limited area of operation so that they can cater to a specific area known to them. And more particularly, India is a vast country where the different languages are spoken. So region-wise banks will be in a position to cater to the demands of the region. But then over a period of time, the regional rural banks operation became a little bit difficult because of the limited size, scope of area of operation, competition from rural branches of the commercial banks, and more importantly, rising cost of operations due to increased waste structure on par with the commercial banks. As a result of which, the profitability of the regional rural banks was affected. The viability was adversely affected. This actually triggered the move for consolidation. 196 RRBs were facing loss. And these 196 RRBs operating in 26 states of the country were sponsored then by 26 scheduled commercial banks and one state cooperative bank. To ensure that these regional rural banks make profit, the consolidation of regional rural banks was thought over and how to go ahead was a big problem for the regulators as well as the government. To get a clearer picture, the various committees were appointed and based on the recommendations of the committee, the regulators wanted to go ahead. The first committee which was appointed was under the chairmanship of Chalapati Rao, which is popularly known as Chalapati Rao Committee. And this committee submitted its report in 2001. They suggested various amendments to the RRBs Act 1976. Subsequently, another committee was appointed, which is popularly known as Committee on Flow of Credit to Agriculture and Related Activities. And this committee is probably known as Vyas Committee. And Vyas Committee in 2004 suggested that in the first stage, all RRBs of a sponsor bank in a state should be amalgamated into a single unit in that state. And at the second stage, there should be a state level consolidation of RRBs. Well, this was under consideration. Another committee was appointed by the regulators, which is known as Sardesai Committee. And this committee suggested two options for strengthening the regional rural banks. 
first merger between RRBs of the same sponsor bank in the same state or merger of RRBs sponsored by different banks in the same state. The focus of the recommendations of Sarthi Sai Committee was it should be state focused. So all RRBs in the state should be consolidated either by the first method or by the second method. Based on these recommendations, the regulators and the government of India took the first set of amalgamations initiated way back in 2005 when 28 RRBs were amalgamated to form nine new RRBs. So that was the beginning of the amalgamation of RRBs. Over a period of time, from 196 RRBs, they came down to 133 in 2006 by March 2005, and further to 105 and subsequently to 82 by March 2012. As on today, there are 56 RRBs in the country. And this, as for the financial statements released by NABARD for March 2017, the balance sheet size of these 56 RRBs is of 4.7 lakh crore. And of these 56 RRBs, 50 RRBs are in profit. The remaining, remaining are still in loss. So this being the present position, the Possibly in the days to come, the RRBs will be in profit so that <clears throat> the viability of the RRBs will not be questioned. Now I will move on to the second topic that is cash management. What do we understand by cash management? And cash management is for whom? That is what we are going to discuss in this session. Cash management is basically nothing but extending a service, a fee-based service to the corporates so that the banks can earn the non-fund-based fees to increase their profitability. The banks are under great stress because the credit growth is dwindling day by day. In 2017 and 18, the year on year, credit growth was just 8.2%. And if this trend continues, the banks will recede their profitability and they have to find out some ways to increase the profit. So to improve profitability, banks will have to concentrate on non-interest income. Cash management services is one of one way through which the banks can definitely increase their profitability and basically it is going to be a little bit sort of a steady income one can say what is exactly we mean by cash management cash management basically refers to collection concentration and disbursement of cash so for corporates especially the SMCG companies and uh, different types of companies which have got offices spread over in different parts of the country, it becomes very difficult for them to collect cash or collect checks, maintain accounts at different centers, reconcile their collections, make payments at various centers. It's a big job. Now this job, we can say that it is outsourced through banks and banks are ready to help the corporates in this way. So basically, what is meant by cash management is to optimize the liquidity through improved flow of funds. Now, we have already discussed what is the importance of fee-based services for the banks. The banks have to increase non-interest income by increasing fee-based financial services by charging fees for the services. So under cash management system, banks will extend this service to corporates and they will also earn their services charges for this extending this service. The revenue earned 
through this method is more stable over a time and assures a ready income, steady income, more importantly leads to a strong relationship with corporate client. Because retaining a client is also very, very important from bank's point of view. So for corporate entity with various subsidies worldwide spread across the country in different parts of the country, offices at various points, pooling of collections is a big problem. The surplus monies at various subsidiary offices will be lying idle if not used properly. So if one can know what are the different collections, what is the surplus available in one place, or if I have to make payment in another place, is it possible for me to shift from the surplus center to a shortfall center? All these activities can be undertaken by the corporates provided they have a ready available data. And this is possible if cash management services are utilized, which are provided by the banks to the corporates. So in short, for a corporate entity, the end result will transform the treasury function to the profit center by optimizing cash and put it into good use. So this is of great importance to the corporates now. Let us have a look at the benefits of cash management. First, pooling of funds at desired locations. Let us assume that they have got about 50 offices. So from 50 offices, funds can be pooled at one centralized place and the corporate will be in a position to know what are the funds available to me on a day-to-day -day basis. Second, it creates more control over time and funds. Otherwise, it is difficult to maintain, difficult to maintain the accounts at different places and also to keep control over the funds at different centers. Third, single point inquiry for all queries. So from the corporate office, the bank, the corporates can inquire with a banker. And the banker will be in a position to provide the data on a real-time basis, how much funds are available at different locations. Fourth, it enables easy employee-related payments because the corporates can give instructions to the banks that these are the payments which are to be released to different employees at different centers. And this work can be taken up by the banks very easily. The cash management system supports electronic payments and more importantly, it produces faster electronic reconciliation. So the corporates will get an idea if there is any difference, identify the point where exactly the difference lies. It allows for detection of bookkeeping errors because one point control will help the corporate to detect and rectify the errors, if any, in bookkeeping. Most importantly, the corporate need not draw several checks for payments. So it reduces the number of checks to be issued and saves time for the corporate. And lastly, it earns interest income and reduces interest expense because they will be in a position to deploy the funds available through the better cash management system. Now, what are the types of cash management services which are being extended by banks to the corporates? One, collection of checks on a pan-India basis. Pooled credit is passed on to the client at preferred location as indicated by the corporate. And this is essential for efficient management of available resources. So this results in borrowing cost lowered borrowing cost, improved liquidity position, better accounting and reconciliations, customer queries are resolved quickly by the bankers and efficiently, corporate can view online a real-time movement of checks data, download data reports centrally so that they need not have to maintain people at different locations to manage all these things. So it definitely reduces the cost of operation for the corporates. Thirdly, direct debit collections can also be extended by banks. This is a hassle-free mode of collection, such as repayment of EMIs of loans, 
periodical SIPs for investment, etc., from the accounts to the bank for NBFCs and corporates. Fifth, debit mandates given by corporates of the corporates drawn on any bank are uploaded, uploaded on NSEH platform and funds are collected seamlessly on due dates with the banks. So the corporate need not worry about the collection on different occasions. Banks also extend bulk remittances through NEFT and RTGS. Bulk payment needs of high net worth individuals are taken care of in addition to corporates. Dividend payments, this also is extended by banks. So on due date, the execution of payments is effected so that leaves the unnecessary worry which the corporates have to take, the bankers will take care of the dividend payments. The banks also extend doorstep banking facilities to premium clients, cash pickup, delivery on a daily or a call basis of cash, check pickup, delivery of DD, pay order. These are the various things which are extended by banks for premium clients. Apart from this, the educational institutes, universities, colleges, schools, boards conducting examination face a big problem regarding collection of fees. So these services are extended by the banks. Their branches are spread across the country and payment of fees from any center can be made by the candidates for the admission, college fees or examinations, etc. So this is again a wonderful experience for the educational institutions, universities, colleges, etc. Banks also extend collection of tax of various state, central and government departments. So again, this is a extended service for facilitating the corporates. Insurance sector is flooded with collection of insurance premium. Now for insurance companies, the bank extend the services for collection of premium either by cash or by checks. And thereafter, the instant credit of premium account is given to the insurance company. This is again a hassle-free service extended by banks. Apart from this, the corporates, many corporates need checks with their names printed. And at times they also ask checks with digital signatures of authorized signatories so that the instruments cannot be altered. So this service is also extended to corporates with a bank. Bulk check printing facility to institutes as well as corporates is extended by banks. So this is a great advantage, particularly to big corporates. Now, to help the banks and also the corporates, various initiatives have been taken by RBI. Number one, introduction of computerized settlement clearing transactions. So this facility has really helped big bankers. Then the Reserve Bank has also introduced MICR technology and IFSC codes facilitating NEFT and RTGS transactions. The RBI has also initiated electronic clearing service scheme, national automated clearing house platform, and apart from this, the CTS system, which has been introduced way back in 2010, is also one step to control frauds by altering the checks. So this has really helped the bankers as well as corporates. And to a great extent, it has smoothened the working of corporates. So with these initiatives, definitely the Life has become easier for the corporates as well as for the bankers. It's a facility which is extended by bankers. Bankers can earn a little bit of non-interest income by extending this cash management services apart from various other facilities which are being extended by banks. With this, thank you very much for patient listening.